All right, everyone. So this is the partial harvest of teeny. And you'll see that some of those unprocessed bits of cardboard did come through. There are still some things that I would assume are residual leaf stems that have been greatly reduced in size, but are still nevertheless like little matchsticks in here. And as I turn this over, you will probably see worms. Yep, there was one go by, I saw one. I did see a worm. Because some of them got through the sifter and I didn't pull them all out. I didn't go through and try to get all of them. That's another little tiny bit of plastic I just saw tumbling down there. I'll take that out. So there will be worms in here and there will be cocoons in here. And there's cardboard in here and this is moist. So it will be just fine for worms to live in here. I will make sure that this material stays moist. And what I thought we would do is usually when I pull castings like this, I just sit them, like I said, for six to eight weeks. And then we use them in our garden. But this time, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take you along to show you what aging castings look like as they go through the various stages and what I do to get them finished. And so what I've done instead of marking a date when I first wanna pull worms is I'll just bring you around the front. I've actually marked that these are teeny worms and we put them in June 25th and I'll do a series and we'll keep looking at these castings to see what they look like as they season the cocoons hatch and the worms that are in there and the new hatchlings, the new little wisps, finish off the remaining bedding. All right, everyone, take care. Okay, everyone, it's July 10th. So I harvested this from Teeny, and this is just showing you the progression of these castings. They have worms still in them, not as many, obviously, as a worm bin, but there are worms in here. I haven't done a check-in for quite a while, so we'll see how the worms are making out, finishing off these castings. My idea here is to leave enough worms in here that they can continue to process the castings while the cocoons hatch. I realize that means you're gonna get second generation castings, or cocoons rather, uh, and I'm willing to take that risk. There are, this, these castings are not that deep in the container. I only harvested, I would say it would be less than half of teeny. I am not seeing a lot of, of um, cardboard left. I am seeing a very large worm. So there's at least one fully grown adult in here. Again, these are worms that came through my sifting. There's more movement there in the casting, so more worms. I'm just, there's another worm. So, you know, there's probably, a, you know, given that I can't see all of them, there's probably a good dozen or so worms in here. Fully, full-sized worms plus whatever hatches out. All right, it's July 16th and it's our check-in on the castings for Teeny. Normally I would have added more castings to a bin this size to age. I've put them in other bins just so we can continue to monitor Teeny's worms. Now I did give Teeny's worms probably about a tablespoon of pureed, well, canned pumpkin down the center you need to be mindful of not only the moisture in aged castings, aging castings, but also that the worms that are in here have something to eat. So if I turn over this center region, I'm expecting to find worms in here. Where are they? Oh, there's one. <laughs> the castings are dark and the worms are dark. So there are worms in here, and see that one's fairly large, not just a wisp. And that's what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for that sweet spot that I will harvest these castings when the 
big worms are big enough to bait out and spot, but not so big that they are going to start producing casting or cocoons of their own. And you know what you can do is when you find a large worm like this one, I could take him and put him in another system to stop him breeding in this bin if I'm concerned about it. But you know, I'm not super concerned about it. Really, I just wanted to show you that look at these castings. Any visible cardboard is rapidly disappearing. These castings, if they didn't have worms in them, would be lovely to make warm tea, to put into the garden, anything I like. The moisture is just beautiful. I mean, it's just, um, you know, I'll just do a light squeeze. You can see they hold the shape, break apart easily, no clumps. So there we go. I think I will actually end this little series right here because really the, the larger bits I'm seeing um, that, that broke apart. I'll, ch I'll check to see if whether that's a bit of wood shaving or maybe, sorry for my arm, maybe a bit of plastic that I inadvertently left in there. But these castings are done. So there you go, harvested on June 25th. They've eaten all the residual cardboard by uh, July the 19th. So that's uh, three, three, just over three weeks. There will still be unhatched cocoons in here, no doubt at all. But if I am willing to accept that loss, these castings are good to go, as finished as you would ever want them in your systems, in your gardens. All right, everyone, so that's Teeny signing off and on to the next experiment.